happened to, um, as a result of, say, the uh, tremendous technological development, what's going to happen to the old American idea of pragmatism? Of pragmatism? Yeah. Well, the metaphor, it will always hold up. It just means experience, doing something. Don't do something, just stand there. Now, that is uh, the new kind of pragmatism, because whatever you're likely to do uh, could uh, sort of uh, be catastrophic, like pushing the wrong button. Um, but um, pragmatism is merely the simple metaphor of activism, doing things, getting things done, and I don't think that any place or time in the world has ever been against pragmatism. I never heard of anybody being against pragmatism. Even Buddha was a pragmatist in the sense that what he set up as exercises were practical means of human uh, happiness and well-being. Very pragmatic. All communist, I'm sorry, all oriental ethics are very pragmatist. They're not based on any abstract theory, but entirely on practical results. Would you say that the oriental is a more interior type of person? Of that course. He's brought this battleground more within himself. But he's not as interior as the electric man. You see, every time you open the paper, you read about uh, new cults of inner life springing up. Drugs are, are simply an attempt, <coughs> the lazy man's attempt at <laughs> Buddhism. <laughs> the inner trip. And they're taken uh, like aspirin, just an aspirin spirit. Um, but um, the inner trip is the new Orientalism of our world, you know. The electronic circuit world, you see, is an all inner. It's a complete feedback. Electric technology is all Buddhistic as such. But our, so is our nervous system. Electric technology is simply an extension of our own nervous system. Now we have our nervous system outside us. We can do things with that that we couldn't do before. All previous technologies merely put outside our physical powers, our arms, our backs, our eyes, our ears. Technology puts the nervous system outside as an environment, information environment. So the inner trip results automatically. But in a very masculine way. No. No. Because we're going very feminine in the Western world. Feminine, though, you see, means integral. That's imploded. Masculine means specialist, fragmented, that's exploded. Feminine means unified, integral. Masculine means fragmented, specialist, outer. At least it used to in our Western world. Uh, there's no need to uh, divide the uh, human powers quite so drastically as that anymore. Both can be both. And this creates confusion, too, as you know. The homosexual is trying to be both masculine and feminine, and in a world that has long been specialist, masculine or feminine, creates great confusion. We haven't learned how to live with these things. But it's happening to us. You see, we are living mythically, but we still try to think rationally in the old 19th century pattern. But our lives are actually conducted at mythic speeds and multi-levels of things happening many levels at once, as in a myth. The word word, I think I've mentioned once, uh, is mythos in Greek. Word is myth. In an information age, a whole culture becomes word. That's where the theologians uh, need to heed. The 
the meaning of this time. Because sooner or later it's going to have some relation to the divine word. <laughs> I think sooner. But since uh, it is very much the wish of the divine word that this should be. This could be the greatest religious age in all human history, maybe the last. <laughs>